shoulder therapy for shoulder injury, injuries utilizing extracorporeal shockwave therapy. So this study was performed to help evaluate how do shoulders do with shockwave. And as we've gone through before, shockwave is trying to use mechanical means of impacting the tissue to trigger healing mechanisms within the body. We've all heard that phrase of sometimes if a bone doesn't heal right, you need to go back in and re-break it and make it heal as it should. Well, shockwave does that with soft tissues. It goes after the muscles and tendons. In this study, we saw a change in how well the shoulder moved post-treatment and a decrease in pain scores, the VAS, increased along with some functional movements and capacity tests that they utilized. So a shockwave, as we see in that impact, this is an example along a shoulder of both that trapezius, so that top of the shoulder coming up towards the neck, we see how that turned just dark red and reacted to the shockwave treatments, and out along right underneath the spine of the spat scapula going out to the supraspinatus insertion point. So in the study, they concluded that extra Extracorporeal shockwave therapy was efficient and safe. It improved pain-free range of motion and the functional scores. And what we're looking for is, that's great in the study, but what does it mean for you? Can we get after the tissue that hurts? Well, everybody's always talking that rotator cuff tendon or that supraspinatus tendon as it comes out underneath the scapula and inserts down onto the humerus becomes painful. Well, so does that infraspinatus and teres minor, that lower ridge on that picture on the right that comes out with that upward migration of the shoulders. And when people pull it up by the ears and the shoulders rounding forward, we tend to really overwork these tissues. And what Shockwave was doing is trying to get the healing cells to migrate and upregulate to get the healing and repair instead of the other cells that produced a chronic inflammation, fibrosis, or scar tissue formation. So we're trying to tear up the bad and put down the good. Basically, we're just irritating the tissue with the impact to trigger that collagen synthesis or the repair uh, mechanisms come in and put down good solid fibers in the direction they're supposed to be. It's going to downregulate the inflammation and factors that help irritate an area and make it more painful. And it's definitely going to shut down some of the pain response. That gate theory of pain, substance P just makes things more tender, more sensitive. And if we get rid of those factors, people are just going to feel better. And that's why after shockwave treatment, people will immediately feel relief because of how we've downregulated the gate control theory. It's also going to help increase blood flow to an area. So the more little blood vessels you can get in to tissue, the better healing and repair we're going to get. So basically, we're bringing a big hammer and we're whacking little muscles and tendons and make them heal. So we're irritating the tissue to trigger that healing response. Goals, once again, with any shoulder especially is we're getting rid of the pain, then we're going to increase that pain-free range of motion, which help with our flexibility. As we get our flexibility to improve, we're then going to work on our strength and endurance of the muscles that affect the shoulder and how it moves to then help build joint stability and finally functional goals in patients. So that flexibility, it's just not the shoulder. It's also with the muscles of the chest, back, and thoracic spine. Any muscle that affects how the scapula or arm moves. And we have a lot of big ones that do that. And there's nothing like stretching after treatment. You're going to notice a big difference in your pain-free range of motion, but how much further you can get that arm to move in different directions. Strength and endurance, you always start in a single plane of movement. So with a band or a weight going in just one direction, nice and easy. And then we can make them harder, more complex movements such as rotational, sitting on a ball, starting to get more functional. We really need to work on that scapular stabilization. Too many times people just want to focus on that tendon that's sore or that muscle that's radiating pain. But the reason it's radiating pain is it became overwhelmed when the system started breaking down and excessive amounts of forces were being passed up to that tissue. So the term sick scapula or scapular dyskinesis really is the cause of a lot of rotator cuff sprains and strains. And we want to work through getting the scapula stabilized so that we can anchor all of the muscles to make the shoulder perform as it should. And there's nothing like trying to do push-ups on an exercise ball to really understand where you stand functionally with your shoulders. If you can do 50 push-ups on the ground, we would expect you to be able to do about that many on a ball. But a lot of times we'll get people in here who tell us 50, 60, 70 push-ups, and they can't do five or six because they're not stabilizing that shoulder well with the stabilizer muscles. 
especially those little guys. They're using the big, strong muscles to get through an activity, not the little ones that really matter. So I always use that example in my office of trying to climb a mountain. If they're all tied to the same rope, the whole group has to move up together. You can't get the bottom guy above the top guy. So we need to get that range of motion, flexibility, strength, endurance, and finally that joint stability all to progress to the top to get that shoulder properly healed. In our office, we like to say the goal is to be like Mike. Break down that painful soft tissue, enhance the tissue repair, then gain flexibility, strength, and finally that functional status. So I hope this study was interesting and gave you a good direction of where to head next for our extracorporeal <laughs> shockwave therapy treatments for shoulders. More information can be found on our website, going to robertsonfamilychiro.com conditions shoulders. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day and keep working on that shoulder stability so that you can do 50 push-ups on that exercise ball.